This is a 2018 McLaren 720S. It's McLaren's new exotic sports car, replacing the 650S. Now, in the past, I've complained that all McLaren models look the same and they have the same engine. Well, here's one that looks completely new, and it has a completely new engine with 710 horsepower. I've borrowed this 720S from McLaren Philadelphia here in Westchester, Pennsylvania in the Philadelphia suburbs. And this isn't even the coolest car they have. That honor goes to a P1 they currently have for sale for over $2 million. But this one is pretty cool as it is the latest McLaren model. It only came out a few months ago. And yes, it has 710 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque, courtesy of a four liter twin turbocharged V8. It also weighs just a hair over 3,100 pounds, which makes it around 280 pounds lighter than a Ferrari 488 or in terms you can understand, approximately one giant panda lighter, or roughly 21 armadillos. <laughs> of course, if I'm comparing this thing to the Ferrari 488, you probably know this thing has got to be pretty expensive, and indeed it is. The McLaren 720S starts at $285,000, and with options, things can go up from there. This one has a sticker price of just over $335,000. So today I'm going to show you what you get when you spend more than $300,000 on a McLaren. I'm going to show you all of its cool features and its interesting quirks. Then I'm going to take it out on the road and tell you how this thing drives. And then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the 720S experience, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of the other hottest, most anticipated new cars coming out this year, according to me. Now, I'll start by addressing a question I'm sure you have, which is, how do you get in the 720S? There's no visibly obvious exterior door handles. Well, it turns out you reach into the middle of the door behind the door panel, and there's a little black pad. Put your hand on it, pull, and then the door pops right open. And then you jump inside. So now I'm inside the 720S to go over the long list of quirks and features in the interior of this car. There are some really cool ones. Starting with the coolest of all, that would be the gauge cluster. Now, when you get in the car, you'll notice that there isn't a gauge cluster. It's not until you turn on the car that the gauge cluster whirs into place, making a full 90 degree turn so that it displays itself to you. But that's not the coolest thing about the gauge cluster. The coolest thing about the gauge cluster is that when you put the 720S into track mode, the gauge cluster whirs down again and goes back into the position that it's in when the car is off. And it only displays the information you absolutely need to know on the very top of the gauge cluster. Put the car back in sport mode or regular mode and the gauge cluster goes back to its normal position, displaying more information. Now, interestingly, it's not just track mode that you can use to change the positioning of the gauge cluster. There's also a little button to the left of the steering wheel that you can push and that will change the gauge cluster from down to up and vice versa. Another cool thing about the gauge cluster is that you can customize when it whirs into its lower position. The default is track mode, but in the center infotainment system, you can change that to sport mode and track mode, or you can make it so it only happens when you manually push the button. Of course, there are other cool things about the gauge cluster. For example, the gauge cluster in this car, like in all McLarens, is highly configurable. So on the left part of the screen, you can adjust using a little stock that comes out to the left of the steering wheel. You can look at all sorts of different car functions, temperatures, settings, menus, etc. Meanwhile, over on the right side of the gauge cluster screen, you'll find the regular oil temperature, engine temperature, and if you turn it to sport mode, you'll also find the type temperature, but if you go into comfort mode, that disappears because I guess it isn't necessary when you're just driving for comfort. I also love the fact that when you change the drive mode setting from comfort to sport, it also changes how the gauge cluster is displayed and what information it shows you. In comfort, you see the regular things you'd expect in a normal gauge cluster, but if you put it in sport, it becomes sportier and the gear is displayed a lot more prominently so you know what gear you're in. And then of course switch into track and you know what happens next. The other cool thing about the gauge cluster, when you're driving down the street and your RPMs are going up, it's not just a little needle that displays where your RPMs are. The bottom part below the needle lights up to give you a better idea of where your revs are, and that is really, really cool. And finally, another cool thing about the gauge cluster that I really like, when you turn this car off before the gauge cluster retreats back into its sleeping position, it tells you how many days of battery life you have left. That's because McLaren knows that its owners are going to park these cars for a long time. They got 10, 12 cars in their collection and it's really nice to know exactly how long you can let it sit before the battery would go flat while you're driving your other exotic cars. 
But while the gauge cluster might be this car's coolest party trick, it isn't the only cool feature inside this interior. Instead, there are a lot of them. I'm going to move on right now to the air vents. So we'll start with the air vents in the middle. Now, in the middle, there are two air vents in this car. One is a circle, the other is sort of a triangle shape. The triangle one can't really be adjusted. You can't move it up or down or side to side, but you can do one cool thing with it. If you push the big silver button in the middle of it, turns it off. No more air comes out. Push it again turns it back on. It's sort of a little hidden feature of that air vent. The other air vents are also unusual. They're circles on the left, right, and middle of the dashboard, and you can move them all around just like normal air vents in regular cars. But the cool part is if you turn the little silver tab in the middle, it turns the air vent on and off and on and off, which is a cool little quirk of the air vents. Next up, two more of my favorite features in this car, the middle of the interior. That would be the drive mode selector and the transmission selector. I'll get to the transmission selector in a second, but the drive mode selector is especially cool. It allows drivers to change between comfort, sport, and track mode, but unlike other cars, you can do this twice. One switch for the powertrain and one switch for the suspension. That means you can have the powertrain in track mode for crazy fast throttle response, but just in case you're driving around on the street, you can put the suspension in comfort mode so the ride doesn't beat you up. It's a really cool idea. Now the other cool thing about the drive mode selector is you can't just turn them in order to change the drive mode. First you have to activate them so you're really sure you want to change the drive modes before you do it. It feels like you're confirming something on a fighter jet. Moving on to the transmission selector, this has to be the coolest transmission selector in any car. There's no gear lever. There aren't even regular buttons. Instead there are these little levers you push to get the car from reverse to neutral to drive. It's one of the coolest things I've seen and it looks really cool too. Also, also, I love how nice and sturdy those levers are. It gives you a nice feel when you put the car in gear. Now, if you're wondering why there's no park lever, it's because in order to park this car, you put it in neutral, and then you pull the parking brake, which is a little switch to the left of the steering column, and then the car is in park. You don't have to put it in a park gear. It's like a stick shift in that regard. Another interesting item, back to the steering column, that would be the stalks for the turn signals and the wipers. They are really cool. They're really sturdy, but they also just look really cool, and for some reason they have a hole in them. I don't know why I like these things so much, but I really do, and I'm glad that McLaren uses them. Also interesting in this car, now because the gauge cluster can fold away when you're in track mode, or if you just manually fold it, you wouldn't be able to see all of the lights you might need to see, like the check engine light and other warning lights, whether your turn signals are on, that sort of thing. So, this car has two fixed driver information centers that contain all of the little warning lights to the right and to the left of the steering wheel. Those are always there regardless whether or not your gauge cluster is upright or sleeping. Now, like in a lot of exotic sports cars, there was no glove box in the 720S. But like in a lot of cars with no glove box, there are a lot of other interesting storage areas throughout the cabin. Like, for example, the doors have a couple of little storage pockets, one on each door. The center console has a nice little storage pocket with a rather sturdy center console lid. And there's a net between the seats where you can store stuff. But my personal favorite storage item in this car is behind the seats. There's a little shelf. And while most cars are content to just leave this shelf there so you can throw your suit case back there, the McLaren actually has a little strap on the shelf that straps on to four different anchor points. And the coolest part, the strap has the McLaren logo in the middle. Next, we move on to another one of my favorite features in this car, and that would be the windows. Not the windshield, the windows on the sides, the windows behind you. How about the windows above you? There are windows in this car mounted on the doors. They're optional, and it's a $2,690 option. I'm gonna get into more of the crazy options in a minute, but the windows are maybe my favorite of the crazy options because when you're sitting in the car, it looks like a cockpit in a fighter jet. All the other glass goes almost over you, and then the windows are right above you. It's a really neat look, and check out how cool it looks when the door is open. Now I've been in a lot of exotic cars, but I've never seen door mounted windows that line up above your head when the door is closed. That's pretty cool. Next up onto the cup holders. There are two of them in this car. One of them is hidden under the center controls, so no one will really know that it's there. The other one is right in the middle, and in this car it's lined in Alcantara which is not really the material I use for a cup holder because it'll just stain and get dirty and fade quite quickly. But nonetheless, it's there and it will hold your drink if you want. And then we move on to the infotainment system. Now the infotainment screen in this car is vertical like in previous McLaren models and not horizontal like in every other car, which makes for an interesting look. There are a few interesting things about the infotainment screen. One is the fact that when you put this car in reverse, the little tiny reverse camera shows up in the infotainment screen arrayed horizontally, even though the screen itself is vertical. The good news, you can put the reversing camera in the gauge cluster, which makes it a lot easier to see and gives you a lot larger screen. Another cool thing in the infotainment system, that would be the very 
variable drift control mode. McLaren clearly wants you to have fun with this car. Nobody else has a drift control mode, and this one allows you to go and control your drifting on a closed course, obviously. I also love the look of the climate controls. It's inside the infotainment system, which I don't always love, but I'm willing to make the trade-off for this. Take a look. The guy in the climate controls is wearing a helmet, <laughs> like he's in a race car, but he's getting air conditioning put on him. I love it. You can set the climate controls based on the helmet guy. You can send him up to his helmet or to his legs or to the windshield. One of the things I don't like, this car's heated seat buttons are in the infotainment screen. I'm a big believer that heated seat buttons should just be something you press when you're really cold instead of having to go through various menus, but at least this car has heated seats in the first place. Oh, and speaking of seats, the seat controls for this thing are so weird. Like in other McLaren models, they're not mounted on the side of the seats, like in most cars, or even on the door. Instead, they're at the front of the seats, next to the gear selector, and they're not really all that intuitive. You kind of have to play around with them for a while to figure out exactly what button moves what. The reason for that is they're not really in the shape of a seat. And instead, they're just sort of an array of buttons that you can't see. So you got to kind of touch them and see what happens. Another interesting thing inside the 720S infotainment system, that would be valet mode. You go in, get it in valet mode, input a pin, and then the car is in valet mode so you can safely turn it over to a valet. And what happens then? When the 720S goes into valet mode, the top speed is limited to just 35 miles an hour and the engine revs are limited too. Not that that will stop valets from finding a way to damage it. I also love the track telemetry options for drivers who take their 720S on the racetrack. Go into it and you read a little disclaimer saying that when you're using track telemetry, the radio, phone, and media are disabled. Pretty cool, but so is this. You can compare your lap time with prior laps, enter your driver name, or even note bad weather so you know why a lap may have been a little slower. There's even an option for snow in case you're doing some snowy track days in your $335,000 McLaren 720S. Next up, we move on to the doors. You're probably wondering, how do you get out of this car? Well, there isn't a standard door handle, but there is this electronic door pull. Pull it and then just push on the door and it opens right up. The harder part is actually closing the door. These doors are really, really heavy and getting them closed properly requires some force. Now, obviously, if the electronic door pull isn't working, there is a manual release. It's just to the left of the driver's seat or the right of the passenger seat. The little cord you pull to manually open the doors in case the battery has failed. Now that I figured out how to open the doors and get out of the 720S, time to move on to the quirks and features of the exterior. There are many. We will start with the headlights, which have been very controversial in this car. In fact, a quick glance, you might think that the headlights are missing, but they're not. The weird thing about the headlights is there, there's this little cutout, like you can see, and there's a bar going across it. Well, that's not the headlight. That's actually the turn signal, and I think it looks kind of cool. The bar goes across the headlight, and then it sort of continues on the other side of the bodywork by the wheel. The actual headlight itself is further in underneath that bar behind it and also behind that bar is a little air intake so it's a combo headlight turn signal air intake thing this is a controversial aspect of this car but i think it looks at the very least interesting now moving on to the trunk, you'll find a couple of interesting items up here in the 720S, starting with the fire extinguisher, which by the way, it's hilarious, it's in the trunk. A fire starts in the car and you stop, pull over, you pop the trunk, walk to the front, open it, turn on the fire extinguisher. It's like 30 seconds before you can actually start battling the flames. Anyway, there's the fire extinguisher and there's also a first aid kit and a warning triangle. Now, the reason I find those things kind of interesting is because they're cheap. The fire extinguisher costs only $180 per the window sticker and the first aid kit and the warning triangle are only $80, which is absolutely nothing on the window sticker of a $335,000 car. In fact, this car has the McLaren Sports Option Package, which is over $11,000, and it shares a window sticker with an $80 warning triangle. It's probably the largest discrepancy in the entire history of car window stickers. Now, speaking of the warning triangle and first aid kit, something else interesting about this car, you can't open the engine compartment of a 720S. Seriously, you pay $335,000 and you can't even look at your glorious engine. There's no button inside the cabin, it doesn't pop back there, there's no way to do it, except hidden inside the warning triangle and first aid kit compartment, there is a little tool that allows you to get into the engine compartment, but only in an emergency. Otherwise, McLaren doesn't want you fooling around back there. Another interesting thing up in the trunk, on the left you'll notice there's a little net containing a leather zippered pouch. Well remember this car doesn't have a glove box, so that's where you'll find your McLaren owner's manual. It fits perfectly inside this little zippered pouch. And when you open up the pouch you'll discover that the owner's manual is hardback. It's a very classy way to learn how the buttons and switches in your McLaren work. 
Moving around to the back of the 720S, let's talk spoiler. Right now it's in the down position to make it extra slippery for high speed, but push a little button inside the cabin in the 720S marked Aero, and the spoiler shoots up to give you extra downforce. Take a look at the spoiler in action. Something interesting worth noting as you look at the spoiler going up and down, maybe you noticed it, normally the third brake light in this car is right here under the back window, but when the spoiler is up, it would obstruct the third brake light, and so when the spoiler pops up, the third brake light switches from here to the spoiler itself. Put the spoiler back down, and the third brake light switches back from the spoiler back to this little spot below the window. It's a kind of cool little touch if you notice it when it's going on. A few other interesting things in the back of the 720S. One of the things I like best about this car, all the McLarens, is that the exhaust is right here in the middle above the license plate. It's not only a cool look, but it lets you hear it a little bit better than you would if it was down here. I really like that. I also love the look of the tail lights, the brake lights, the turn signals. It's these tiny little lines, and they're arrayed just perfectly on the back. They give this car a really dramatic effect. For some reason, I really love minimalist brake lights and turn signals like this, especially on cars with such dramatic exterior styling. And then there's just a little line for the brake lights and turn signals. Another interesting piece of rear lighting in this car, they get the brake lights and the turn signals up here doing their thing. Well, the reverse light, all the way down there below the license plate, and it's really tiny. Apparently, the reverse lighting doesn't fit in with the McLaren design philosophy. Another interesting item, as you can probably hear, the car is on right now. So I go to open the fuel door, and nothing. It won't open, which is odd, and there's no button or switch inside the car to release the fuel door. So I'm thinking, how do you open this thing? I can't get it open. What do you have to do? Well, it turns out, watch this. I'm going to turn the car off. Now the car is off. I push the fuel door, and it pops right open. Apparently, the fuel door can sense whether the car is on or off, and it won't open unless the car is turned off. Next up, a few other interesting exterior quirks in this car, starting with the doors. Now, I already told you they have those windows in the top of them, and that they're really heavy, but one of the craziest things about the doors is just how complex of a piece they are. For example, where you go to open them, they have a hole in them so that the door can line up with the air vent and send air into the engine, and that isn't the only hole in the door. There's a separate one at the base of the door on the outside. It's absolutely crazy. The entire door opens upwards. It has two windows inside it, one of which rolls down, and it has two holes. I don't think I've ever seen a door this complicated before. Another interesting exterior quirk, how about the windshield wipers? One of them is gigantic, one of them is incredibly small, just like the Honda Fit. No, really, just like the Honda Fit. If you have one, you know what I'm talking about. And then there is maybe this car's most appreciated feature, and that would be the sport exhaust. The sport exhaust in this car is a $5,770 option, but when you're driving it, you might think that it's worth every penny. Take a listen while it's just parked here. So those are all the 720S's unusual quirks and cool features, and no surprise, it has a lot of them. Now it's time for maybe the best feature of all, the driving experience. Time to get this thing out on the road and see what it can do. All right, driving the 720S. I've wanted to do this ever since I first saw a picture of this car, just like I'm sure all of you did. <laughs> well, that's fast. <laughs> Wow. I should mention this is not a brand new car. It has a thousand miles on it. It was a demo or a press car or something, so I'm not thrashing a completely new engine. I'm gonna put down the gauge cluster. I don't need it. I don't need all that information. Right now it's down, it's so cool. The ride comfort is actually not so bad. Uh, you feel the bumps, but unlike in a lot of other uh, sports cars like this, I feel like in a lot of others, you, you a lot of stuff bump, bump, you re it really hurts. This car, it's dampened a little bit better. It sort of feels a little bit smoother, even though you still feel them, if that makes any sense. I cannot figure out how to turn the seats. The seat controls are so bizarre in this car. It's one of the big annoyances. You can't see them. I mean, there's no way to know what you're what you're adjusting when you're adjusting it. One of the things I absolutely love about this car, in addition to the engine note, which is of course amazing, the turbo note, the, the whistle from the turbochargers, is one of the coolest sounds that I have heard any car. Going around a little bend here. Shifts are 
instant, absolutely instant. But that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is the speed. <laughs> it's struggling for traction in third. I mean, you violate every speed limit in the world in, in three and a half seconds. This is one of the fastest things I've driven. Unbelievably, my incredibly expensive and terrible Sony microphones chose this moment to fail, but don't worry, I've already replaced them with better units for future videos. I ended up driving the 720S for about an hour, and here are some of the highlights. Number one, this car feels fast. It isn't like some fast cars where you feel insulated or removed from the road. You know exactly how fast you're going, you feel like you're going fast, and the sensation of speed is very thrilling. It also helps that the car slopes down directly in front of you where you're sitting in the driver's seat, so you don't really see much car ahead of you. Instead, it actually feels like you are going that fast, which makes it seem even more exciting. I noted several times the 720S's handling is incredibly precise, although I swear the Huracan is just a little bit more precise and exact. The 720S feels secure and predictable and incredibly capable around every corner, but I think it falls just a slight step behind the Lamborghini. It doesn't lose anything to the Huracan in terms of the transmission, though. It's just as fast as the Huracan or the 488. I also kept remarking on how fast this car is. At one point I noted, and I'm quoting here, how is it this fast? A few other notes about driving the 720S. The interior is a wonderful place to sit. First off, everything is screwed together perfectly. Every single panel and surface and material feels expensive and tightly situated, but it isn't just that. The interior is cool. Many exotic cars go to great lengths to create cool exterior designs, only to offer interiors where you forget you're sitting in an exotic car. The AMG GT and the Audi R8, for for instance. I like that sometimes, but the 720S is just as cool on the inside as on the outside, and that's a neat feature. Also, like other McLaren models, when you're going very fast and you slam on the brake, the spoiler comes up and acts as an air brake. This helps you slow down, but it dramatically limits your rear visibility when you're stopping hard. Speaking of visibility, the positioning of the mirrors is weird. Because of the design of the door with a big hole right next to the car, the mirrors are way out from where you'd expect them to be, rather than right next to the windshield. It works but it takes some getting used to. And so that's the 2018 McLaren 720S, the latest exotic sports car on the market. If you're wondering how it stacks up against its rivals, the McLaren 720S, like I said before, has 710 horsepower. The Ferrari 488 has 660 horsepower, and the new Lamborghini Huracan Performante has 630 horsepower. The 720S will do zero to 60 in about 2.7 seconds compared to three flat for the 488 and the Huracan Performante. So this car is loaded with cool features, and cool quirks, the driving experience is incredible, and it's a little quicker than its rivals with a little bit more power. All for $335,000. Time to see how it stacks up in the Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, I love how the 720S looks and I think its shape is more thrilling than the competition, but I understand the complaints about the headlights, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Acceleration it does 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds, which earns it a 10 out of 10. Handling is very, very, very good, and the 720S is just about perfect, but I swear the steering is just a little slower than the Huracan, which earned a perfect 10, so the 720S gets a 9 out of 10. Next up is cool factor, and this car is near the top. It's the hottest new exotic car. Most people haven't seen one yet, and it easily earns an 8 out of 10. Importance is also high, as this is not only a sought-after desirable exotic car, but also McLaren's first model with this new styling and new engine, so it gets an 8 out of 10. Added up, and the total weekend score is 43 out of 50, leaving it one point behind the Huracan and tied with the 488. This is going to be a close one in the battle for the Doug score. So we move on to the daily categories and features where the 720S is simply better equipped than the 488, and especially better than the aging Huracan. It's on par with the new R8 V10 Plus and it earns the same score an 8 out of 10. Comfort is good, better than the rough Huracan in 48, and it once again ties the R8 V10 Plus with a 5 out of 10. Quality, however, is a sore spot. The 720S's interior is truly fantastic with everything put together wonderfully and with excellent materials, but long-term reliability is a worry. With a relatively new, relatively unproven brand, it gets a 7 out of 10, which is below all the rivals. Practicality is 
this week, the 720S has just 5.3 cubic feet of cargo space, which is far below the 488's 8.1 cubic feet. And while the 720S has an extra space under the rear glass, it's really hard to access. Consider that, plus two seats and bad fuel economy, and I can't give it more than a 2 out of 10. And that brings us to value. The Huracan and R8 V10 Plus got a 7 out of 10, but they're way cheaper than the McLaren. And if the 720S is like other McLaren models, it's going to depreciate quickly. It earns a 6 out of 10, bringing the total daily score to a 28 out of 50. Add it all up, and the total Doug score is 71 out of 100, which places it near the top. But let's take a closer look compared to rivals. The Huracan is still the champion on the weekend score, but it's worth noting the 720S is faster. I just don't have a way to show anything above a 10 out of 10. More importantly, the 720S combines the R8 V10 Plus's excellent scores on comfort and features with the 488's excellent weekend score, which is no easy feat. The 720S only loses when it comes to value, dependability, and practicality, things I think most exotic car owners consider a little less important than the other stuff. It might have the same score, but I personally would take the 720S over the others, at least until the next new one comes out, because that's the trick in this segment. The newest one is usually the best. Until the next newest one comes out, then it's the best, and the cycle continues. But right now, the 720S is the newest, it's the best, and I loved it.